Police are hunting a man who's been exposing himself to teenage girls in the southern suburbs. They've released this sketch of the man. And in the public interest, we repeat the picture of the Perth flasher. The public are warned not to approach this man. Good evening. And still the entries in our Media Watch contest for the most egregious tautology keep flooding in. This is from Liz Jackson in last week's Four Corners. Some judges will say, we should just follow precedent of the past. And Liz, though you did it three times, the rules are one tautology per journalist. The Crichton Brown story has found the ABC somewhat wanting. First, Heather Hewitt's story for the 7.30 report opened with the most god-awful illustration imperative and a contrived one at that. After recent political events here, Heather Hewitt ponders if we're heading down the same track. It's not often that Australian politicians are forced to air their dirty linen in public. And on AM, Ellen Fanning got it seriously wrong, asserting that... Former Fraser Government Minister Ian Viner says the day he obtained a copy of the restraining order taken out against Liberal Senator Noel Crichton-Brown was a tremendous moment for the Liberal Party. Did he really say that? Sounds unlikely. He didn't, of course. Here's what Ian Viner actually said. I mean, I think it was a matter of um, tremendous uh, uh, moment uh, to the Liberal Party. A not insignificant difference. TV Week is running a quiz for readers in which one question reads as follows. Which TV network would you be watching if Neighbours was on? Um, SBS, the ABC, anything but Neighbours. The grossest bad taste award for this week must go to the Gold Coast Weekend Bulletin. Filipina maid Flor Contemplacion was hanged at dawn yesterday at the maximum security Changi Prison in Singapore. And their headline... Singapore Sling. Now to all this fuss about rugby league, though why the sport should attract such media interest beats us. It's quite obviously of minimal crowd appeal. The Newcastle Herald, covering a match, reported the result... Newcastle 46 Tigers 12 And the statistics Scrums Tigers 10-8 Penalties Tigers 9-7 Crowd Eddie Ward And he didn't enjoy it much. Our interest in the story isn't to do with the merits of the controversy. It's in the evidence it's provided all of us, including people where rugby league isn't played at all, of the hazards, no, the consequences, of tycoon ownership of mass media. Good evening. The 1995 Rugby League Premiership seems headed for chaos tonight. First this evening, the revolution that has changed the face of Australian sport forever. Good evening. The biggest shake-up in Australian sporting history is continuing tonight as the Australian Rugby League and News Limited fight for control of leading players. Good evening. The Super League battle has become full-scale war with clubs and players taking sides. Good evening, Richard Moorcroft with ABC News. The rugby league war has reached international dimensions. The conflict between mass media proprietors has its genesis in their conflicting commercial interests. Who was it said real competition means no competition? The Packer Corporation, having bought the rights to broadcast the games of the major rugby league premiership on its nine network, and the Murdoch Corporation, having bought 15%, for the moment, of the seven network, and into pay TV, which desperately needs rights to sporting spectacles. Here's Tycoon One, 18 months ago, on the occasion of his securing those rights. There's been a bit of criticism of the 42-minute show on Sunday night. Would Has you... there really? Yes. Has it been by you? Me and among well, us. Well, yeah. when, when you get a television station, we'll take notice of what you say. OK. And now Packer's arrogance has come back to haunt him. Two months ago, Tycoon 2 made his first move. It was more of a feint, it now emerges, running the concept of a Super League up the flagpole to see who saluted. Tycoon 1 swept into Rugby League headquarters to assert his proprietorial rights. Mr Packer declared to the meeting, Don't give it away. Don't let a media organisation run your game. I have the television rights and if anyone thinks they're going to take it away, I'll sue them all and I expect your support. The scorecard two months ago... Super League. Round one to Packer. If Tycoon One was watching his own network a fortnight ago, his blood must have run cold. 
Tycoon 2 was on 60 Minutes. Did you lose that round with Kerry Packard? Rugby league is only one of several sports. So if we've failed in rugby league, we'll move on to the next sport and the next one, and maybe we'll come back to rugby league one day soon. Or later. We'll see. Fateful words. And note to whom Tycoon 2 is delivering them. Not to interview a vent, but to Tycoon 2 Jr. standing at the back of the room. Just five days after that Murdoch interview went to air, the Murdoch Sydney tabloid revealed its master's move. News Limited has launched federal court action against rugby league administrators and six clubs, escalating the power struggle to establish a super league. Significantly, there was no byline on the story, proving its importance. Inside, the layout proved how carefully timed it all was, and they even repeated the front page on the back page for those who start reading there. The action is a declaration of war against the Australian Rugby League. They mean Tycoon 1. After which, the Murdoch tabloid dispensed with all pretense that it was covering the story and became a rabid advocate for its owner. What was represented as news coverage has been studded with this sort of tendentiousness. News Limited's bid to start a Super League surged ahead yesterday. Rugby League's highway to the future. For the opposition, opposition. ARL flounders in quicksand. The humourless reality of the Australian Rugby League. Murdoch's Sunday tabloid did his bidding too. A sensational Australia-wide swoop. A phenomenal seven million dollars. Officials yesterday bunkered down in an all-day crisis. Stunning Australia-wide swoop. Most remarkable 24 hours. Phenomenal four million dollars. Mr Murdoch's elite. Official ranks are also in turmoil. An already substandard premiership. And the paper personalised the counter moves thus. Packer after Fittler. Asserting that such efforts were a ploy. Next day it was the telemirror's turn again. The brutally cropped Sunday night replay on Channel 9. The indifference of Channel 9 to requests for more rugby league on Sunday nights has constantly angered viewers. The plaintive call of a parent wounded. Murdoch's cartoonists exhibited different degrees of independence. Ross Baitup had his boss moving the goalposts while Tycoon 1 kept his eye on the ball. Warren Brown wanted to emphasise Packer's hypocrisy. How dare they interfere with the fine traditions of rugby league? Sean Lay followed the same company line with Packer railing against a corruption of the true meaning of sport and being asked, I see. And what then was World Series cricket? In the Australian, Peter Nicholson drew them both as self-deluding, but with Tycoon 1 somewhat the worse for wear. And it's Packer making a brilliant recovery. Away from the News Limited payroll, Jeff Pryor ridiculed the growing matchup of Tycoon 1 Jr. against Tycoon 2 Jr. My dad's got more of other people's money than your dad. And Kathy Wilcox was quite wrong in assigning the blame for greed to the players. And then a very bad blunder from the Packer camp. They had Alan Jones make some commercials for the ARL. Hello, I'm Alan Jones speaking to you on behalf of the Australian Rugby League. Many of you must be utterly confused, if not downright annoyed, at the recent developments in your game. He parroted away at the Packer line and finished with a direct appeal to the raw material. I'm saying to all players on behalf of the league, sign nothing until you know more, and especially until you've heard what the game you currently play can offer you. Mr Murdoch's Courier Mail described the use of the parrot as... A stunning reactionary move. Logical, really. Jones is a stunning reactionary, and not at all a persuasive one. Langer, I've signed. Between 50 and 80 players have now committed themselves to the new competition. The Courier-Mail hacks proved no more independently minded than those at the Telly Mirror, notably Paul Malone. The company's plans to take rugby league to the world through its international television interests. News Limited's stunning and successful recruiting swoop. The world at their feet if they join in News Limited's new plans for rugby league. News Limited yesterday took a convincing lead. Ken Cowley and his array of star players have changed the face of league forever. Even in Melbourne, Murdoch's man Terry McCran tried to persuade an uninterested Herald Sun readership. This was... The titanic battle that has erupted for the very soul of Australia. But the headline... Behind the Rugby Biffo showed how little the Herald Sun understands. 
Rugby is not rugby league. Rugby is a game played by gentlemen. Murdoch's Ken Cowley, speaking on AM on Thursday, appeared to acknowledge the link between News Limited's interests and News Limited's copy. Unreservably, uh, our papers are unbiased, so there's, there's, it's absolute rubbish. I mean, I must say, um, um, emotions by, I think, all the media are a bit over the top about Super League at the minute. So you're completely happy with the way it's been presented? Oh, t certainly happy with our newspapers, absolutely. And well, he might be. The Packer camp fought back with the weapons they had, the Nine Network and its unfailingly loyal servants. One number the Murdoch camp missed out on is outstanding Cronulla prospect Adam Ritson. The 18-year-old turning down a quarter of a million dollar offer to sign up with the $2 shelf company. Murdoch's pay TV empire has swallowed up gridiron in America, soccer in Britain, and now, if you believe his papers, rugby league in Australia. So is Aussie rules next. That's to keep Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania's interest. But what about the cry of the die-hard league fans in all of this? Forgotten as the game they live for is carved up by Rupert Murdoch. Put Rupert Murdoch back in bloody America where he belongs, mate. Because you shouldn't come in here and ruin our bloody game. Attempting to wrap up the conference, Paul Vorton ran foul of the News Limited journalist who wanted to continue questioning players. No, we're finishing up, if you don't mind. That's uh, been given instructions, is that all right? By who? Well, by, by me. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Fat heap of <laughs> <laughs> At any time, even a player of Laurie Daly's stature could be relocated from Canberra to the Western Reds. As to that performance of barely disguised sycophancy by the Packer Hacks, Errol Simper got this from Peter Meekin, who's in charge of them. I think pushing someone's barrow to the detriment of the truth is one of the most heinous crimes in journalism. If we start showing bias, I think we're going to do ourselves irreparable damage. Too late, she cried. Good night to you.